could be killed. The smoking mountain looms over the sprawling city. But how do you forecast the eruption of a volcano? Volcanologists search for clues in three basic ways. Barry Cameron. The first way is seismology, by looking at the distribution of earthquakes beneath a volcano. The second is land deformation. We look at whether the volcano is uh, inflating or deflating by looking at very small movements in the flanks of the volcano. And the third way is by analyzing the chemistry of the gases in magma. We can look at the composition of the gases to understand whether magma is at shallow or deep levels. Barry I. Cameron, University of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. These are the clues Duria seeks as he continues his quest at Goma's Volcano Observatory. A researcher studies pages of wavy blue lines. Here, Congolese researchers closely monitor a seismograph an instrument that amplifies and records vibrations from tremors caused by the movement of magma beneath the Earth. Carl R. Thornburg, U.S. Geological Survey. As magma moves up beneath a volcano, you physically have to displace uh, the rocks that are around it. So the breaking of rocks creates these earthquakes. And as magma moves up, you'll tend to get more and more earthquakes at shallower and shallower depths. And that's a sign that a volcano is, uh, is likely to erupt. The seismic activity Duria sees today is disturbing. The new recordings we have got today is showing that there are many, many shocks. Normally, Duria would compare today's seismic readings with those from 2002, looking for patterns to predict a future eruption. But Goma's observatory in an area racked by civil war, had been looted just prior to the last eruption. So the previous seismic record is incomplete. Uh, voilà. Duria is joined by Italian volcanologists Dario Tedesco and Orlando Vaselli. They turn to satellite images to measure land deformation. Barry Cameron. A signal is sent from the satellite down to the volcano and the distance from the satellite to the volcano can be measured very accurately. If over time we see changes in that distance, we understand that the volcano is uh, inflating or rising on its flanks. Now, Duria and others study his computer. Yesterday, These color-coded satellite photos show the area around Nuragongo rising and falling, as if the volcano is breathing in and out. Duria and his team suspect this land deformation, combined with the increased seismic activity, may be the result of deadly magma in the fissures. But the amount of magma within the volcano is a secret hidden in Niragongo's gas emissions. We have a huge plume extending towards the west, northwest of the volcano with a huge quantity of gases. The gases are an intimate part of the magma. Tom Casadevall, U.S. Geological Survey. And as that magma comes towards the surface of the Earth, the pressure on that magma is reduced. And as the pressure is reduced, gases then escape from the magma. The greater the amount of gas being released 